what is it you said to the kid? The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. It's a very rough, mean place. And no matter how tough you think you are, it'll always bring you to your knees and keep you there permanently. If you let it, you or nobody ain't never gonna hit as hard as life. But it ain't about how hard you hit. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving forward. How much you can take and keep moving forward. If you know what you're worth, go out and get what you're worth. But you gotta be willing to take the hit. Start off by giving all glory and honor to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakodash. Double honors to the apostles, the elders, the great millstone, Ruel, and peace and salutations to the hopeful elect who are continuing to fight and teach this thing of ours in truth and sincerity. Under Brother Manatazak with GMS Ancient of Days in Los Angeles, currently teaching with the small sanctuary in Inglewood. And today, through the Spirit, I want to get into a lesson going into how we're in the championship rounds. Don't stop fighting. Okay? Now, the inspiration of this lesson is coming from standing upon our watchtower and seeing all the proceedings going on around the world, the wars and rumors of wars. You got uh, different destructions, earthquakes, tornadoes in diverse places. Okay, you got the, the, the fall of the, the FRN, which is the American dollar. You got the rise of the, the new monetary system from BRICS, okay, which is supposed to go live uh, sometime in November from what I'm hearing, okay, you got uh, the different uh, wars and rumors of wars, okay, and you got scoffers and scorners popping up like never before with all these new doctrines, okay, and these are all signs that we are in the end times, okay, the list goes on and on and on, and the specifics of those can be found all throughout Israel with the brothers that are, that are highlighting the proceedings as they happen, okay, so the inspiration of this lesson, we're in the championship rounds, don't stop fighting. Just stay focused and stay on the path. Because there's a lot of distractions and deceiving spirits out there. Okay? We know according to the scriptures that Satan, as a roaring lion, you know, uh, uh, seeks to devour and sift. Okay? And, and we're in a major sifting period. Okay? Amongst Israel right now. Okay? We should expect that the closer we get to the end the harder things are going to get, okay? That's why we got to stay locked in. We got to continue to fast, study, pray, and ultimately have faith, okay? Because the ride isn't over yet. Now, I want to begin in the book of 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 3. And the headline reads, Paul warns of stressful times, okay? This is 2 Timothy, chapter 3, which reads, this know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Okay? And it should stand without reason that we're in the last days. You'll have somebody in the Christian or Catholic Church, okay, co-sign on that much. Alright? So how much more us that are actually in the know, that understand these prophecies and know what to look for? We could say with, with certainty that these are the last days. Hell, uh, over 2,000 years ago when, when Yahweh Shai was put on that cross for the nation of Israel, you could say during that time began the last days. So how much more so now? Okay. Continuing on, it says, For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures more than lovers of the Most High, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. Okay, now, now Apostle Paul, the scriptures, okay, just just <laughs> just railed off 
a laundry list of things to literally stay away from in these last days. And everything on here, okay, we can put as the epitome of something that's going on in our daily lives or in the world around us, okay? The things that were just listed here are prevalent now, especially in the year 2023, okay? But the scriptures are warning us, when we see these things, from such turn away, okay? We know the way, and we know which way we're supposed to walk. And as this world continues to, to spiral down the drain, okay, with this society and the people with it, we're supposed to stay clear from that and continue on the path that is set before us. Continue to put our trust and faith in Yahweh Hashem Al Shai. Okay? But the scripture is warning us of this thing, so when we see them, we already know what to look out for. Okay? Uh, let's get a... Uh, Let's see. Let's jump down to 2 Timothy chapter 4, beginning at verse 3. Okay? It says, For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And we're starting to see examples of that now. A great sifting is happening through Israel. All right? You got the Mississippi bug outs. You got, you got this dude uh, from one body. Je Jephtha, okay. You got the the reemergence of uh, Elder Kazak, the original seven from One West. There's a lot going on in the spirit, okay. And for those of us that are just coming in, you're gonna have to really discern, okay, who who's out for for the betterment of your spirit, okay, or who's out here trying to get the bag, or who's out here trying to deceive you. And you're going to need the spirit of Yahweh Hashem Shai in order to sift through that. Ultimately, if the spirit is not dealing with you, then you're not going to get it anyway. We understand that the hopeful elect, even the ones amongst these congregations that are going off, are going to eventually wake up and turn back to the one true doctrine in Yahweh Hashem Shai. But the closer we get to the end, the more deceive, deceivers are going to be out there. The more stumbling blocks are going to appear the harder the road is going to be, so to speak. Continuing on in verse 4, it says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned into fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure affliction. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So amongst all the trials and tribulations and chastisements that we're going to go through in this truth, even in this life, okay, there is still a job that is required of us. Because the Lord put the Spirit on us to understand this word, so he has given us a grave responsibility to do the work of an evangelist. Okay? We, we, we go through all the different temptations and, and, and all the different hardships that anyone else in this life goes through. But we are also given the responsibility of fighting through that and teaching the word to the best of our ability. Okay, it is a very important job, and one that, if we've been given the proper understanding, one that we should not shun from, because you have Hashem Hashai could have chosen anyone to receive this word, but the fact that he chose you to not only receive it, but to understand it, and he's given you the unction to teach it, that's a great responsibility, and everything else should become second to that, through the Spirit, Okay. But with that, you're going to have your distractions. You're going to have Satan and his minions. And you're going to have these scoffers and scorners and mockers and shit talkers come after you to try to chip away at your faith and to try to lead you into false doctrine and, 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 and new ways of, of, of understanding the scriptures. Okay? But we're supposed to keep our minds single. Okay? Leave all those outside distractions where they're at. And continuing the things that you have learned. Alright. Now let's continue on. Let's go to the book of Psalms. Chapter 94. Verse 11. Alright. The scripture reads. The Lord, Yahweh Shemashai, knoweth the thoughts of man. That they are vanity. Okay. Vanity. Vain. Empty. 
futile. Okay? How can man understand his own thoughts when, when we're not even in control of the things that we go through in this daily life? There's no such thing as free will. There's a there's a there's a, a, a semblance of free will where we perceive that the things that we do in our daily walk is from our own, you know, conscious mind. But in fact, we have already been programmed to do the things that we are doing. Okay, it's not it's not a hard thing to understand. But with that knowledge, that should send the ultimate fear down you, knowing that if you're not doing the work of Yahweh Bashim Shai, then it's a problem. Especially here in these last days, when you see everything that's going on across the world, while most of the people are blind and left to their own devices, okay? If you can actually see and understand the things that are going on, then you should be wanting to get right with your power because you know destruction is on the way. And with that destruction, deliverance. But only deliverance for a small remnant. And you should hope to be a part of that number. Okay? And true indeed, all Israel shall make it. But you should want to make it on the first go around. It's a great shame if you are left here to be destroyed. Even to be reborn in the kingdom in a righteous and perfect body. Okay, you have to live with the shame that you didn't come to Yahweh Hashem and Hashai when he becked and he called and his hand was open out to you. Okay, and that's the problem with most of you Israelites. The open place of repentance is here now. The doors of mercy are open now. The grace period is now. Okay, but that 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 time is 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 a uh, is not infinite, so to speak. There's a finite time. Okay. And eventually, Yahweh Hashem is going to shut those doors, just like he shut the doors of the ark. And nobody was able to get in. They mocked and they scoffed Noah, too. But then they felt that first raindrop, and then they believed. But by then, it was too late. Okay, if you're an Israelite that's straddling the fence, don't wait until it's too late, because that's the main problem with our people. Procrastination. And procrastination is going to get a lot of us killed. And when I say us, I'm talking about you so-called Negroes, so-called Hispanics, and so-called Native Americans. We are the true children of Israel. And the Lord is beckoning and calling to us as a people. But only the hopeful elect are going to hear that message. All right? Get out of Jeremiah 17. Jeremiah 17, beginning at verse 9. And it reads, The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? Okay? Just as we just read in Psalms that the thoughts of man are vain. Okay? When it says here in Jeremiah 17 and 9, the heart is deceitful above all things. That word heart is the Hebrew word lob, which means mind. The mind is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Why? Because it's inhabiting this sinful flesh, which was made to go off. It says, who can know it? We, we don't even understand our own bodies, let alone the, the different thoughts that may cross our mind and the different courses of action that we do. That's uh, Yahweh Bashim Shai understands. And that's why we should worship Yahweh Shai all the more, because he experienced what we experience on a daily basis. So he knows what, what, what we go through, different temptations, different aches in the body, okay? But but he, he overcame, and he did that not only for himself, but for the hopeful elect, that we may be brought back to the good graces of the Heavenly Father. And for that, we do give all praises to Yahweh Bahashem in the name Yahweh Shai, all right? Verse 10, it says, I, the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Hashai, search the heart. He searches our mind. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. So the Lord is going to take us to the brink, but he's not going to destroy us. He knows how much we can take before we break. But best believe he's going to push us to that limit. Okay, especially if we're members of the hopeful elect. We have no choice but to do this work. And he's going to try our reins, okay? 
and in doing so, okay, it says, and according to the fruit of his doing. So the Lord is going to try us. He, he is going to challenge us to believe in him, so to speak. Okay, and the hopeful elect are not going to fail. As long as we continue to keep our faith and know that the Lord is not going to destroy us. He's in control of all things. And us being in this truth should take ultimate comfort in that, knowing that there is nothing that happens in this life that is not already preordained by a decision made in the Spirit. Okay? Now, with that being said, let's get Matthew 15 and 14. Because there, there are those that have turned from the way of Yahweh Shemashai and instead put their trust in men and that's going to be to their own destruction. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 14. Uh, it says, actually, I'll begin at verse 13. It says, but he answered and said, every plant, okay, and this is red letter, so this is the words of Yahweh Shai. But he answered and said, every plant which my heavenly Father has not planted, shall be rooted up. Now during this time, this is talking about the wicked scribes and Pharisees that didn't belong. Okay? This is not talking about food. Okay? This, this is talking about uh, the wicked scribes and Pharisees. And even when you go to the headline in Matthew the 15th chapter, it says the religious leaders criticized the disciples. Okay? So, so for you unlearned Christians and Catholics out there that think this is talking about food, you're wrong again. The proper understanding is this is talking about the wicked uh, Pharisees, okay, that didn't belong amongst the body. All right? Now, Matthew chapter 15, verse 13 again says, But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. Okay? we're starting to see that now all these new upstarts and agents they're nothing but blind leaders of the blind okay if you've been given the the, the spirit of, of understanding then you should know okay that how about shimai shai is dealing with the apostles and elders of great millstone on down okay their their work has been tried and tested Videos all the way from the 80s, if, if not even longer, can be found of them still on YouTube to this day on the highways and hedges prophesying. They never stopped. Okay? And the work that remains is a testament of that for those of us that weren't around to, to, to see it or hear it. Okay? The Lord Yahweh Shemeshah is dealing with the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. They are the vanguard of this truth whether you believe it or not. And pretty soon the Lord is going to manifest who he's been dealing with. And best believe it's going to begin with those men who have been diligent for 30, almost 40 plus years now. Okay? And that's just the, the, the truth of the matter. But back to these, uh, these guys that are trying to usurp authority. Okay? Because there's a lot of them popping up out of the woodworks now. Let's get Isaiah 30 and 10. <clears throat> Excuse me. Actually, let's begin at verse 9. It says that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of Yahweh Shimei Hashai. And, and the fact that Yahweh Shimei Hashai gave the law to our people, that should be a problem to you Israelites, man, who don't want to keep the law, statutes, and commandments. They were given to our people to set us apart from these other nations. Yet you, you we're a rebellious people, lying children, stiff-necked and hard-headed. And like a stiff-necked and hard-headed child, you need your ass beat. And that's going to come in the way of nuclear fire, among other things. And then you're going to know. And then you're going to understand. But it's going to be too late at that point. But the warning is going out. You still have time to repent, which means to turn back. But there's going to come a point where it's going to be too late. And you don't want to be caught up in the judgment 
that's going to befall this place. Verse 10, would say to the seers, that's the prophets, right? Before they were called prophets, we were called seers because we were the visionaries of our people. Would say to the seers, see not, and to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. So instead of hearing the truth, you would rather hear a bunch of lies that sound good. And that's going to be to your own destruction. Okay? Because you're 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 out of order. Verse 11, get you out of the way, turn aside out of the path, cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. And that's a damn shame. Here it is, the Lord chose us out of all the, the nations, the 18 nations. He chose the Israelites, the 12 tribes, to be his holy people, his set-apart people. And you have the nerve to say this? You deserve to be destroyed. Okay? Lord willing, the hopeful elect hear this message and, and it instills enough fear in you to repent and turn back. But for the rest of you Israelites, you deserve to die. Okay? And that, it is what it is. With that being said, the book of Matthew, chapter 13, beginning at verse 10. Actually, I'll begin at verse 9. And these are the words of Yahweh Shai, red letter. Who hath ears to hear, let him hear. And the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou to them in parables? Okay? The disciples were asking Yahweh Shai, why, why are you speaking to them in parables? It's almost like you don't want them to understand what you're telling them. And, and this was Yahweh Shai speaking to his own people, just as we speak to our own people. Sure, we, we go out and give these other nations their judgment. The primary reason we're out here is to wake up the Israelites. But but as Yahweh Shai is about to, about to reiterate, our primary mission is to wake up the elect out of the nation of Israel. Now listen to what Yahweh Shai says, verse 11. He answered and said to them, Because it is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them it is not given. Okay? The Lord is speaking to them in parables because it wasn't given to them anyway. And best believe you, Yahweh Shai knew all the spirits then. He knew who, who wasn't part of the elect. Now we don't, okay? But we understand these mysteries. So when we go out and teach them plainly, it's going to be like a parable or a dark saying to these people that aren't meant to understand. But the hopeful elect are going to hear and they're going to understand, they're going to repent, and they're going to turn back. Okay? And that's why it's important for us to be on the highways and hedges. That's why it's important for us to do these video epistles. Because this is the platform Yahweh Shema Shai is using to bring his people back to him. Okay? Now, oh. let's get the book of Sirach in the Apocrypha, which, yes, is canon. And the book of Sirach is the book of Ecclesiasticus. Okay, Ecclesiasticus chapter 2, verse 14 famous scripture even now in these days how much more so okay Ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse I'll begin in verse 12 it says woe be to the fearful hearts and faint hands and the sinner that goeth two ways so woe to, to those of you that, that, that have a fearful mind and faint hands meaning you're not doing this work or you're lazy and complacent with a slothful spirit. Or, you, or, or it says, And the sinner that goeth two ways. Don't the scriptures say a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways? Look at the leaders of these other congregations. And look at what they taught in the past and what they're teaching now. Double-minded. Now, on the contrary, look at what the apostles and the elders have been teaching in the past and what they're teaching now. It's the same strong, sure, and tried doctrine of Yahweh Hashem Shai. Okay, verse 13. Woe well, unto him that is faint hearted, for he believeth not, therefore shall he not be defended. Okay, so your mind was never in this. You came for a time and then you fell out. Scriptures say that those that have put their hand to the plow and look it back is not fit for the kingdom of heaven. All right, verse 14. 
Woe unto you that have lost patience. And what will you do when the Lord shall visit you? So the Lord gave you this truth, entrusted and instilled in you, the Rakakodash, the Holy Spirit. And what did you do with that gift? You put your hand away from the plow. You lost patience. Don't the scriptures say, though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry? Once you come into this truth, it's blood in, blood out. You can't stop. You can't quit. But Yahweh Hashem is saying to those of you that did, what's going to be your excuse when the Lord returns? You're not going to have none. You're going to be destroyed. And the proof of that is, 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 is in the word woe. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verses 12, 13, and 14 all start with woe, 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 destruction. And best believe the third woe is coming. And it's coming quickly. Okay? It's coming quickly. Um let's get uh let's get second Timothy three and fourteen. Second Timothy three and fourteen, which reads, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom Thou hast learned them. Okay? And, and we're continuing in the things that the apostles and elders have taught us because they're watching out for our souls. Don't the scriptures rightfully tell us to give double honors to them that rule well? Which is what we do through the Spirit. Not to man, please, but because the scriptures tell us to do that as a form of respect. And we're going to end it in uh, 2 Peter 3 and 9. Which reads, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And that's talking about the elect. And the elect are going to succeed in that mission. Lord willing, us doing this work in truth and sincerity are counted amongst that hollow number. So remember, we're in the championship rounds now, we're nearing the finish line. Don't stop fighting. Don't stop running. Keep moving forward. Okay? So with that, I want to give all glory and honor to Yahweh, Ba'ashim Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashim Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who rule well. And peace and salutation to the hopeful elect who are continuing to fight and teach the thing of ours in truth and sincerity. This has been your brother Monatazak. Until the next lesson, Shalom.